I have a, a deep respect for the sponsor, and my uh, opposition to this bill doesn't affect that respect uh, and admiration that I have for Senator Kruger. I know that she's worked incredibly hard over the last seven years to get to the point we are today, regardless of uh, how I feel about it and how she feels about it. I just want to use my time uh, to provide a voice for millions of New Yorkers who I think were left out of the process. So many of them, their opinions, their wisdom, their participation were ignored. And these New Yorkers will be affected by this law just the same as anybody else. There are stacks and stacks of memos of opposition from a whole wide spectrum and range of people who represent millions of New Yorkers. I think everyone in the chamber understands the cost of this legislation and how it will affect local communities. And that truth, I think, is known by many people. But I feel like we are ignoring some of those issues. What else do we know? That even in the best case scenario, we're making life extremely difficult for the people that are charged with protecting and serving our community. Um, whether we agree or disagree, we know that fatal accidents in Colorado and Washington have increased. And if you look at neighboring states where marijuana is not legal, that is not the case. We know that unemployment has risen, hospitalizations surrounding marijuana, teen suicide, mental health issues, all have gone up. And the safety of our roads, in terms of the DRE issue as we discussed, is of utmost importance to me. We know that driving under the influence of THC cannot be enforced the same way as drunk driving. At best, a DRE can enforce, is going to have a very difficult time enforcing this new law. Uh, we talked about gummy bears and odorless ways to ingest marijuana going to make life very, very difficult for DREs and prosecutors. We also know that there are 55,000 police officers across the state. Only 343 of them are drug recognition experts. There are significant public safety costs to communities, emergency services, and which I think will cost hundreds of millions of dollars as we move through this process. We've spent $40 million, we spent $40 million a year uh, in ensuring that we try to stop people from smoking and vaping. Um, and I'm afraid that, that is, this, this bill will act counterproductive to that. We, of course, just banned flavored vapes, vaping products, because we know that it makes it more attractive for young people to smoke. And I think, again, we're going in a different direction here. I firmly believe that we are setting up communities to fail. Uh, we talk all the time about unintended negative consequences of the misguided policies that so often come out of this chamber and how these policies end up doing more harm than good for the people of this great state. And today I offer respectfully, of course, that we all know what the negative consequences of this legislation will be, but there are some who choose to simply ignore it. If you vote yes today, you're choosing to ignore that. And I would kindly offer that the willful ignorance renders those negative consequences intentional, Mr. President. The lives lost, the damage done to communities and families are preventable and avoidable. Uh, we know this, uh, but we ignore it anyways. This is not opinion. This is not conjecture. This is not politics. These, in fact, are facts. I am afraid that if you're voting yes today, you are putting politics before people. I, for one, am not going to support something that sets our communities up to fail. Today, I choose to put people over politics. Mr. President, when it comes time, I'll be voting in the negative. Thank you.